Welcome back to the Real Life Moms podcast. This is a place where you can take a break from parenting and the chaos of the day-to-day to-do list and really sit and focus on yourselves. I'm Lisa Foster, your host, and today we are talking about how to continue nurturing ourselves during all the transition and phases in parenting. And I'm here with a fellow mom, Rebecca Carson. She is a life coach and she helps moms throughout the stages of motherhood, especially during the speed bumps of life. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Rebecca. Gosh, thank you so much for having me. I would love for the listeners to know a little bit more about your backstory and what brought you to coaching and helping other moms. So I have had a collection of careers, which I kind of, I say collection because I literally collect them and I just keep adding things. And through that experience, I realized through a dynamic lifetime of careers that the connection uh, I I get with people is always the most important part, being able to connect and sort of make a difference in people's lives is just what I thrive on. And so after COVID and a bit of breast cancer, I recognized that and allowed myself to dive into life coaching, to be able to share my experience and my outlook and hopefully enhance people's lives a little bit with each relationship. Yeah. And I love that you collect careers because I think a lot of us think we get into a career and have to stay in it. And back in the day, it was like taboo to change. You know, it's cool to say I've been in a career for 25 years or 30 years, right? And the person that was like, I was only in there for a year or two, but you do learn a lot from the changes and you grow with each one of them. So I love that you've done that. I feel like I can tie them together with a common thread because they all do sort of affect life in a way. I'm an art director for photo shoots, mostly food, TV, and and stills. I do interior design. I sell real estate and I'm a life coach. So kind of touch on how and why and where people live. But the why is really the, the part that, that just gets me going the most. And I saw your website, I was on it and you had uh, this little statement that you help moms rediscover what they may have put on hold for themselves. And I don't know, for some reason that like just hit me when I read it, because I was like, huh, that's so true. I definitely put things on hold to start a family and kind of forgot about them. But there was something like relieving about that statement, which made me feel that I could pick those things back up, you know, that they weren't necessarily gone forever. Right. So I really love that. Yeah. Um, I think it's very important for us to, as moms, to remember sort of what was instilled in us as children to find what we love, to, to develop that, to discover that, to pursue that from when we're little on, you know, through college, we dive deeper. Often our careers are stemmed from those things and we focus on that. And then for some reason, when we become mothers, we sort of flip the switch and we take all of that energy that we we were using on developing ourselves to develop our kids, which of course is what being a mother is about, but we tend to forget about ourselves and that that's just as important in general, but specifically to be a good mother, to be a role model and to just be happy and fulfilled, which makes you a better mother. So how do you help some of your clients actually kind of rediscover those lost parts of them? I first sort of like help them remember. I mean, honestly, I'm one of my first questions to them is what did you want to be when you grew up and I ask the question and they answer and it almost triggers remembering those things that that they did love when they were younger that they focused on that they excelled at and then I ask the question who are you now and they answer the question and it's amazing in coaching when you allow someone to talk they uncover things that they don't when they're just thinking you know, we tend to think in a sort of the same cycle of thoughts. I call them like the greatest hits. You know, we sort of swirl in those. But when you're talking to someone who is there to listen, who is listening, who is hearing things potentially differently than than the person saying them, 
is and getting not feedback, but, you know, as you know, my job is to ask questions that further explore those things. And what is uncovered and realized is amazing. So in those that sequence, back to the sequence of questions, I asked, what do you want? What did you want to be when you grow up? What are you now? And then what do you want to be? And again, just let, let them answer. And so much of, of what they're searching for or, or wanting to discover comes out just in, in those simple questions. Yeah. And we usually dive deeper and, and sort of explore maybe why they're not there and how they can be and what might need to be done to sort of recalibrate their ba- their life, you know, their balance life, air quotes, because balance life is sort of this funny pressurized statement because really an unbalanced life is what you really want because it has to be able to shift. Things are always shifting and you have to accept that. Otherwise you're just gonna like struggle. But we work on figuring out how to be the mom you wanna be and be the person you wanna be. Well, first of all, I love the out loud talking because you're right. Sometimes when you say something out loud and especially if somebody's repeating what you said, you're like, wait, I didn't mean that or I didn't know that, right? Like you almost have to really hear it for yourself. So I think that is such a key piece to it. So yes, I love that. And I love that you just said unbalanced life. Can you like dive a little deeper (laughs) into that? Because that is refreshing. Talk about unbalanced life and what that means and how that helps us kind of shift. Well, I think we always hear find your balance, you know, find your balanced life. Mm -hmm. And, and for a long time, I used to say, well, my balanced life. And I would make this, I would make a scale that was off kilter and like, I'd call it a balanced life, but I'd be like, you know, one side is higher than the other but still calling it a balanced life. But then I just realized, no, we all have a unique unbalanced life. We all have different priorities. We have different responsibilities. There's so many factors. And to like put this pressure of balanced life, it's like saying perfect. Like Mm -hmm. we don't want to be perfect. We want to be perfectly imperfectly ourselves or unbalanced ourselves. Find that right thing. And also, which it's equally, equally as important, recognize that it looks different throughout life, motherhood, it needs to. I just love that so much. I've never thought of feeling, yeah, I've always kind of, you know, tried for balance and I've used that balance word all the time, but I've never correlated to actually being like perfect, but it does make sense, right? That, that balance almost like does equal that perfect. And that's not, that's not great, right? Yeah. Being messy is, is great. There's so much learning in that and trying and evolving and yeah. Okay. I'm walking sideways from now on. (laughs) But it is, it's true. We're all unique and, and I don't know, society somehow kind of guardrails us into not being, not, not accepting that, embracing that. And I think that's super, super important. So, you know, another, another thing that I encourage my clients to do also is sort of, I've, at least I have, I've always lived by the idea of don't waste your wonders, which is probably why I have the collection of careers and adventures. I'm sort of a very spontaneous person. And it's often when I start, you know, like I wonder, 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 and then I go, "Mm, stop, just do it. Just do it. Like, you, you expend this energy wondering, creating all these stories, or just do it and see how it goes and pivot or don't pivot or embrace or I don't know. It's just we tend not to allow ourselves that as mothers. And I just work really, really, really hard to try to inspire moms to do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is there's fear, right? Fear for yourself, but as a mom, there's fear for now the whole family. There's so many other people involved. If you do something, try something, move somewhere that you're also affecting so many other lives that I think it kind of stops us too. And you're right. There's so many stories that go on, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think another thing that gets in the way is guilt. I think as moms, we feel like it's guilty, like feel guilty doing things for ourselves. There's, there are certain things, again, like societal norms that sort of we're less guilty about for some reason. And we tend to then do those things when, when we do, you know, 
when the kids start going off to school and become more independent, you know, we like work out, we get our hair done, we shop <clears throat> and the self-care concept, which is so hot right now. I mean, it, as it should be, but the self-care air quote is always sort of the, you know, the external stuff. And, and it's never like our insides, which it's crazy to me because obviously how we feel not only is like reflected in how we look, but it's reflected in everything we do. And so to be to nurture that for ourselves so that we can show up to the people, to the places, to the responsibilities that we have in the way that we want to and hope to, there should be zero guilt for that. Yeah, definitely. I am... Like I grew up with guilt. I <laughs> think like it was like in my DNA growing up. It's still there. And yes, when you do like for me, if I did something for myself, I felt like I was taking away almost from others, you know, whether it's like I'm working out. So that's taking away time from my kids or I'll, if I take get my hair done or buy something that that money that I use is taking away from the family. You know, like there was guilt everywhere. I've gotten, I've worked really hard on this and I have and some internal self-care. But you're right. I think also getting your nails done is kind of a quick fix. Diving mm -hmm. deep into taking care of your insides, that's also a lot more work. <laughs> more beneficial, yeah. but a lot more work than getting your nails done or hair done, right? Right. And I also think there is sort of, you know, it's hard. You know, it's hard to uncover those things mm -hmm. that can be placated and covered up by getting through the day, doing the things having the clean house, nice house, outfit, hair, you know, the, exactly. But when we neglect those things, they come up in other ways. And I think to not recognize that is so dangerous as we see it. I mean, it comes up in resentment. It comes up in stress, anxiety. And like you said, I mean, the, you know how you feel when you do something that's good for you that you know how do you come home how do you feel amazing yeah I'm shining I'm ready to be there for everybody you know it's not and, it, and I'm not resentful about it either or angry I'm like happy to do because I've taken care of myself yeah exactly we show up better and so yeah I just hope that we can sort of move past the guilt and recognize that because that's a double whammy and it's like we're the parent we want to be and we're the person we want to be and we're taking care of ourselves and allowing ourselves to thrive so that we can make the little ones thrive. And this internal self-care, I'm going to call it, there's life coaching. I, I think of therapy, you know, what other types of things can be internal self-care? Because I think that's the other issue. People don't know what to do. I mean, I, that's what, that's where the like, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you do when you were young that, you know, what, how did you play? How did you have fun? What were you interested in? Do those things, re-explore those things, whether it's, you know, you can take a class, you can start a new career. I think seven years ago when I, I got my real estate license, there was a part of me, I was always interested in real estate, but I hit a point where I just wanted to learn something new, you know, and I don't know where that comes from, but it was just, I wanted to learn something new. So like, we forget that we can still do that especially these days. I mean, there's online courses, there's tons of stuff to do. There's pottery places, there's music, there's, there's, think of what you do for your kids and do it for yourself. Yeah. So when you sign them up for dance class, take one too. <laughs> but so true. So true. Because when I learn something, that's where I'm shining. I love that. Whether it's through a book, podcast, course, exactly what you're saying. I, mm -hmm. that makes, that fills me the most out of anything, I think much more than getting my hair cut or nails done for sure. Or go to the concert or go to, you know, just explore, you know, just do something different, get out of the box. And I don't know, I, it's, I find it hard to believe someone's not going to come back a little bit energized yeah. in a way that's again, going to be good for everyone involved. In parenting, there's good times, there's bad times. You talk about mm -hmm. something called speed bumps. Can you Tell us a little bit of more what you consider a quote unquote speed bump and how can we still kind of nurture ourselves through those types of transitions? Anything, I guess, that is unexpected can sort of qualify as a speed bump. For me, it was breast cancer a few years ago. I think being fulfilled and taking care of yourself in general, in general, as a mom, which 
honestly, like I kind of note in my coaching, don't wait till the kids are about to leave for college, like start early when they, when you drop your kids off for kindergarten, like, and you're sad and you're teary and you can't believe they're walking down the hall by themselves to their classroom. We tend to just feel like loss or sadness. What I want to instill in moms is it's opportunity. They're in school for the day. Take it as an opportunity. Yeah, sure, they're growing up, but that's amazing. That's our goal. Our job here is to create independent humans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's hard to believe it happens, but it does and it keeps on happening. And take those moments. You can be sad, but take them as opportunities. Being a mom of older kids, I see so many friends, peers, clients who feel like the rug has been pulled out from under them as their kids truly become independent, whether it's they're driving themselves around and they're not home anymore or they're off to college. And to me, I mean, it's never, ever too late, but I always wish I could have gotten to them when their kids went off to kindergarten, when that warning light, it's like a car warning light, like, you know, like tires are low. We tend to ignore that until like a real problem. As the kids slowly get older, that's the warning light of they are going to leave. Take advantage of this moment. Look at it as an opportunity to fill yourself up with what is important to you and what you thrive on so that when that day comes, the rug isn't pulled out from under you. You've set a great example for them in you've maintained yourself, you've developed yourself, and you were going to show up to them just wholer, really. And I feel this on so many levels because my daughter is looking at colleges. Actually, we're going soon to visit some. She will be going away next year. But mm-hmm. I do, I feel like because I've done so much work, this process, of course, I'm sad, you know, she's going, it'll be different. The dynamics will change in the family for sure. But I also am so excited. Like I feel much more the excitement about the next phase because I feel very concrete. I feel very grounded. I feel like I have a lot of my own things that I'm doing and I filled my bucket up so much that, yeah, it's exciting. It's an exciting experience for us. Yeah. And, and exactly like what you were asking is being more filled up, filling, like filling your bucket. Exactly. Like you said, it makes anything that could feel hard a little less hard, which Mm -hmm. is sort of go with the speed bumps obviously speed bumps speed bump and whatever it is you have to deal with it and get through it I think that I sort of I don't know if I would say don't waste the one this is related to don't waste the wonders but I've always done the thing I don't know I I was very lucky first of all with my breast cancer was stage zero but I took a drastic step and and had it almost stuck to me when I didn't need to because I just was gonna do you know do the thing And especially when it promises a healthier outcome. But I think feeling like I'm living a really fulfilling life and doing the things and not wondering helped my mindset and made it easier to get through that and come out of it with zero regrets, silver linings. It just makes you a healthier person, I think. And obviously being a healthier person makes anything easier. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got through that, obviously. But yes, the mindset, I feel like is a huge part of any sort of healing journey for sure. So that can really change how you physically feel, emotionally feel. It's such a big part of the healing process that sometimes we just forget about in there. And I mean, I think even for me, like, I think even that experience for me is one of the reasons I became a life coach. It's it's being able to relate and connect and maybe make it easier. I mean, literally last night I spoke to someone who I connected with on Facebook, who was about to have my surgery tomorrow and, and to be able to help someone feel better, especially when it's a hard, hard thing, or if it's a not so hard thing, it's what I realized makes me thrive, which sort of is the impetus of, of wanting to work with people so they can find what makes them thrive. So if someone's going through a speed bump right now, whatever, I know there's ranges of speed bumps, like what's Mm -hmm. one actionable step that you would recommend them to do? I mean, I think keeping the mindset of who you want to be after, after that speed bump, I think 
obviously you have to get through it and whatever, you know, there's a, a million scenarios. So it's hard to sort of pinpoint a real strategy, but I think just keeping your mind there and knowing or focusing on that and taking the information that you get through getting through whatever it is and being strong and brave, which I hate those words, but you know, just like, but those, but being empowered by the thought of who I want to be and that everything is sort of gives you something, you know, just experience, just thinking forward and, and knowing there's reason. And it's usually somewhere, 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 you know, a good one. I mean, it's a stretch sometimes. Silver linings are not always so silver, but there's always something that, that I think you come away with. And I love the thought of like, how you're saying, see who you want to be. Because I think when we're in the space, we're in the space, it's hard to see anything out of it. I don't even think we think about the other side. You just think about like, you're kind of like that. I think that's the only time you're in the moment, right? Is, is that time where it's so difficult that you just can't think of anything else. You're just in that moment. So I love mm -hmm. the fact of seeing yourself where you want to be, who you want to be, and just looking forward to that and just taking the steps to really the next step to get to that end game. Absolutely. And even in the hard moment, you know, I mean, for me, one of the things that was sort of amazing was as moms, again, you know, we're usually the ones taking care. And even though, listen, it was, it wasn't fun at all. It was a lot, but I, I had people taking care of, you know, even in that moment, it was like amazing to see, to have that. And, and sometimes a really terrible thing makes you realize how lucky you are, even when you're not feeling super lucky in that moment. Yeah. So where can people find you? So my website is RebeccaCarson.com. And that that's my coaching website. I have an Instagram, same thing, Rebecca Carson. Um, those two are the best spots. Great. And what kind of services do you offer? So I offer life coaching sort of for the everyday, just, you know, I call it thrive. It's just sort of what we've talked about, you know, holding discovering, exploring, holding on to who and why you are. But then I also do coaching, like we talked about, like speed bumps, divorce coaching, and empty nesting, which is, you know, similar, you know, holding on to who we are through the moments that are tougher with some strategies to get through those moments and transitions. And I just support my clients through, again, through every day or through those tougher moments just by allowing them to be and you know empowering them a little bit to get through it well thank you Rebecca for coming on it's just a great conversation so enjoyable and I just I learned so much so thank you thank you it was a pleasure talking with you